Hi, I'm Sabine, the Purpose Lawyer. Thank you for listening. Please don't forget to like and subscribe to this podcast. It really goes a long way. It helps us spread the good word. And if you or anybody you know is in the market for legacy or estate planning or business or trademarks, please reach out to our firm. It's the Ambitious Legacy Firm. We are licensed in New York and New Jersey, but we have service partners in all states. So we'd love to work with you. Um, asset protection, legacy planning, trademarks, we got you. All right. So it's the Ambitious Legacy Firm. Dot com. Now let's get into the episode. Welcome to another episode of the Ambitious Legacy Podcast. I'm your host, Sabine, the Purpose Lawyer. Thank you for listening and thank you for helping me be on purpose. All right, guys. So today I want to get into talking about family and I'm going to get specific in a minute, but I want to really, you know, shed some light on things that divide families, especially families of color. And that particular thing is lack of planning and lack of communication. And I know I've talked about this before, but it's so true. Like, I can't tell you the countless amounts of conversations that I have regarding this very thing. And especially coming from, you know, uh, being a minority, coming from the black community and seeing how hard it is for people to sort of build wealth, to, you know, get it out of the mud, to, you know, finally get something of value that they have that they would be able to pass down to their loved ones and change the next generation and, and, and allow the next generation to not start from scratch. But just because of lack of taking that next step, it, it, you know, it gets lost. And not only does it get lost or it gets diminished, but it tears apart families. And so we really need to do something different. Once you know better, you have to do better. And these conversations need to be had now while parents are alive, while family relationships are intact. Because like I said, once that person passes away, so many times it changes the entire dynamic and not for just now, right? It's not just a fight. These things can last years (laughs) and could last generations. Not only mess up that level of relationship, but then the cousins and all that that comes after it. And, you know, we're stronger together. So it's better to have these strong, deep-rooted family relationships than to have them apart. Um, I want to tell you about a client that I've been working with for years on, you know, various things and Um, When I first met her, she was taking care of her mom. She was the guardian for her mom and her mom had, you know, some issues and, you know, needed care. So she saw things were falling apart and stepped in. You know, she's not somebody who is, you know, highly educated and not an insulting way, but sort of blue collar and just um, doesn't know the system. And that's why I say that and did what she had to do, figured everything out, you know, got guardianship on her own without an attorney, you know, did all the legwork, took care of mom, made sure she was fed, made sure house was clean, made sure that, you know, bills were paid and the, the assets were preserved. And she has siblings. <laughs> Her siblings played no part in any of this. You know, she solely was the one who was, you know, doing all the heavy lifting. And as a result of that, you know, there came a time where she had to sort of take some money out of the mom's house for her benefit. And because of that, there became a rift in the family. You know, there's mistrust and, you know, all these types of issues that arose. And it just continued to snowball and snowball and snowball. Um And, you know, finally mom passed away and they're still fighting over the assets now because they feel that, you know, there's a disparity as into who should get what. And they also there's distrust and things of that nature. And all that could be could have been um, alleviated with planning. Right. Because if the parent would have made it clear as to what their intentions are and what they wanted, then this, you know, doesn't happen, right? It doesn't happen. And so it's not only this one situation. Like I said, I hear this all the time. And so from the parent's perspective, parents really need to think about just because you've, you know, accumulated these assets and just because you may have said, you know, some some innuendos here and there, you may have had said some, you know, comments and maybe to one child and then separately to another child and then, you know, whatever it is, that that's not enough, right? And I say, say this all the time, it's not enough. You have to actually put some plans in place and we have to make these conversations normal um, because especially in the situations where there is a child that is a caretaker, you know, 
it's it's sometimes feels like it's understood that that child would be able to continue to live in the house, you know, be able to, you know, um, get reimbursed or have a greater share for, you know, putting all this money into maybe paying taxes and buying food and, you know, making sure the mortgage is paid, making sure the lights are on and all the, all that good stuff, taking care of the parent, taking them to, you know, appointments and making sure that, you know, all of their paperwork is filled out and insurances and things like that. It's a heavy lift. Like it's a whole job <laughs> that people do. Um, but you can't assume that that child is going to be greaterly compensated or that child can't assume that they're actually going to, you know, benefit from, you know, whatever is there. Right. So without there being um, a plan in place and, you know, sitting down and having these conversations, but beyond that, also putting it on paper, because there seems to be some sort of misconception in the in the community that. You know, once I've made my uh, wishes known <laughs> out loud or whatever the case is, that that is enough to make sure that things um, continue to go that the way that they need to go. Um, I know of another family. There's like a there's like a few siblings, um, and one of the ch one of the children. She basically spent most of the time taking care of both parents. Both parents were very elderly. Um, doing things like I said, taking them to doctor's appointments, and um, just really being there. And both the parents ended up passing away like a year apart. And now, you know, with four siblings, they're all at each other's throat because the person, the, the child that's living in the house wants to remain living there um, and doesn't want to sell the property because <laughs> the market that we're in right now, although, you know, um, home prices are high, it's hard to find something else, right, to, to, to move into. And just her financial situation is just not great at this particular point in time. And so because of that, it would make sense for her to stay there. It's like she's she's been living there for years. But that's one perspective. You know, the other siblings, their perspective is that, hey, this is our parents' inheritance for all of us. You know, it belongs to all of us. We all grew up in that home. We all, you know, um, are, are heirs. It's equal. You chose... Right. To put your life on hold to care for our parents. So th both perspectives make sense. Right. Like they do. And so you can't really, you know, side with one one side or the other. And what happened ends up happening is the court sort of look at it like, OK, you know, if this goes to court, the court sort of look at it like, OK, um, this person had four kids and these four kids are entitled to this asset. So really, the courts will side with the parent, with the ch with the children who are like, no, this is ours is either you, you know, sell it or you, um, you know, rent it, give us our share or you buy us out or whatever the case is. That's what the court looks at. But is that what the parents would have wanted? Right. We don't know. And so it makes sense, you know, to get this stuff um, out on paper, because even if you're the caretaker, you're not necessarily going to get reimbursed. You're not necessarily going to, you know, get what's yours. And I think, you know, which is the, really the crux of this conversation is the relationship. You know, you don't want to be um, aging and now you have no family, you, you know, all your sibling situation is all messed up and it plays on your health. Both the clients that I talked to you about have health issues and it's no mystery that it could be related to just like the, having all this mental turmoil, this emotional um, issues. It's it's hard enough to be fighting with strangers um, much less to be fighting with the people who you grew up with, who you call brother and sister. It's a really, really tough thing. And people make it seem like, you know, it is what it is. I don't care. I'm just going to go my way and do me. But it, it, it weighs on you. Right. And, it, and like I said, it could last years and years and ripple throughout generations. Like we know, you know, in the uh, throughout history, the best way to sort of uh, stunt uh, a people's growth and stunt, you know, a family is to tear them apart, right? So if we tear apart the families, they don't have any unity. They don't have that, you know, that history, that connection, that groundedness. It's a lot easier to, you know, um, not allow people to progress, right? To, to keep people from progressing. And if we're the ones who are not doing the plannings, then guess who's doing it to ourselves, right? So you want to make sure that you, like I said, have these conversations and 
if it's not in your family, then talk to your friends, spread the word. That's what we're, you know, that's what I'm looking for people to do to sort of make a change in our communities and make a change so that we are not starting from scratch, that we are passing the baton and that we are going farther every single generation. So thank you so much for listening. I hope you guys got something good out of these stories and I will see you next time.